All right, what's up? Keegan, the web bay here. Today I'm going to show you how to host your video files on Amazon Web Services or AWS so that you can use them in Webflow. You want to use these in Webflow because if your video is greater than 30 megabytes, you can't use it as a background video. Or if you want to use sound, um, you also need to use this method. I did a previous video on how to do it from Dropbox, but I personally prefer the pricing scheme that's used in AWS. So most of this video is just going to be covering AWS, but I'll show you right now. I've got this Webflow project open. I'm pulling from a URL that is hosted on AWS. I'll save and close this. We see the video load up here. And then I've already published, so you can see it on the published site as well. All right, I'm just gonna, just so I'm not transferring data while I show you this tutorial, I'm gonna delete that. And we're back to nothing. A lot of the code that's used here can be found from my Ultimate Webflow Resource Library, link in the description below. You probably already know that. Uh, this one uses the Dropbox video, but most of the time today we're going to be with Amazon Web Services, specifically S3, which stands for, I think, simple something storage. And oh, they don't even say. Anyways, it's three S's, but S3 is essentially a uh, virtual space in the cloud that you can host files. So first thing you're going to want to do is create bucket. Let me zoom in here a little bit just to make sure it's visible. And I'll just call this YouTube Tutorial Webflow. And AWS region, I'm just going to choose US East 2. That's what it defaults to. ACL disabled is recommended. I'm actually going to enable them. Uh, this makes it easier to share them. And then block all public access. Nope, I want to allow public access. So I'm going to uncheck that. AWS is going to give me a bunch of warnings, but that's okay. I acknowledge that this is going to be publicly accessible. I'm not going to do bucket versioning. I'm not going to add any tags. I'm not going to do any encryption, and I will click Create Bucket here. All right, so it's got two buckets. This is my previous bucket for testing. And this one says objects can be public, but we need to set it to public. So let's go ahead and enter our YouTube tutorial bucket here. I'm going to upload a file. It can drag and drop, or I can add files. I want to use this. Um, I compressed this video from a, a real estate agent in Chicago. I compressed it to be about 76 megabytes. So let's go ahead and click that. And there's permissions. Uh, we can do that if we want. Grant public read access. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That's what we want to do, right? I understand the risk of granting public read access to specified objects. This is going to be on the web for everybody to see. OK, so it's uploading now. I will speed up the video so that we can be in the future. All right, so the upload is successful. We see we've got our file in there, and we can click on it down here. Let's go ahead and give it a click and see where it takes us. OK, it's got a bunch of different um, links here. The main one I want is this object URL, so I'll just click that and open in a new tab. And we see we got our video here, and I'm getting sound on my end. I'm not piping sound through the stream. But it's good quality. It's that 76 megabyte file. I can just copy this, or I could come here and copy here. Come back to my Webflow project, go to my embed, and give it this new URL. Save. And there it is there. And publish. It was what, seven? It was about 80 megabytes times, let's say, 3,000 requests is 240,000. So that's about 240 gigabytes, we'll say, per month. Show calculations. And it comes out to $21.60 per month. Now, these are kind of high numbers, so you may find yourself quite a bit lower, in which case uh, your costs will not be very high at all. I think um, it's after 55 gigabytes per month that Netlify jumps to... Let's, let's check Netlify. I'm getting confused between um, their pricing and their gigabyte amounts. Maybe it was 100 gigabytes. I think they don't even list it on their free tier. Of course, how inconvenient. Here we go. 100 gigabytes per month then jumps to $55 per 100 gigabytes. So if we compare at 100 gigabytes per month, AWS, ah, I keep closing these drop downs, is $9 versus $55. So $9 versus $55, you ask me, I'm going to go for 9 and then it doesn't jump to 55 per 100 gigabytes. So I definitely would prefer hosting on AWS over Netlify. And Dropbox, I don't even know if they tell monthly limit. Uh, free tier. 
you can store up to two gigabytes. What's the data transfer? I think I actually have this stored on my safely deliver up to 100 gigabytes for transfer anyone as low as eight dollars a month. Still not answering my question. I think I had to get this answered on the forums. Two gig 200 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes of bandwidth for 100,000 get requests. So basic free accounts, 20 gigabytes of bandwidth before you're paying $10, which is already more than AWS. So let's go back to our calculator. Where's my calculator? Here it is. Let's change this to rather than 3,000, 100,000. Still 52 cents, not bad at all. And then Dropbox jumps to 999 once you exceed uh, 20 gigabytes. Is that per day or per month? Where did I solve that? That's per day. Okay. So 20 times 30, 600 gigabytes per month. Make sure we do this right. Which gets you to $54 on uh, AWS. So maybe Dropbox may be what you want to do. It just depends. Um, yeah, interesting. There you have it. That's what I did. If my math is wrong, please correct me. But uh, that's how I would host on AWS. This is what I prefer to use. I like the on-demand pricing. Really know um, upfront how much you're going to pay. All right. Chat with you soon.